I speak on behalf of Barnet Union members who have been treated. Barnet Union now represents everybody in all that part from the agency who have been treated. And as the employer and not as politicians, I expect we would agree with Barnet Union on this occasion. When street scene services don't work well, it can quickly become obvious. Waste when collected is not a pretty sight, and it can quickly become a serious health hazard to the residents of Barnet. Barnet Munison is also aware of the budget cuts identified for the street scene. But before the senior officer proposal is rubber stamped, I want members to reconsider the staff cuts outlined in paragraph 1.10. I'm particularly making reference to street cleansing, where there are 18 posts which represent 19% cuts in the workforce. This workforce is one of the lowest paid in the council. For example, the street cleaning operative earns between £18,375 to £18,657, which is barely above the London living wage, uh, and it is the London living wage we can look into today. Our members must <coughs> understand why their workforce must be covered. What they see is an ongoing rights on agency workers, either on the front line with them, or to fund an ever-changing senior.
senior management structure. I know in 2016-17, Street Scene Services spent £2.6 million on agency and consultants. That is a decrease in the previous year. However, there is still an over-reliance on agency and consultants, both in Street Scene and in the Council. I know with dismay that the final total agency consultancy spent for 2016-17 was £21.9 million, another increase on the previous year. To low-paid workers, such spending just seems wrong, especially when their cuts are made in the name of efficiency. I have a few questions from our members about what they say to me when I meet with them every Wednesday. For example, the move to Harrow and the closure of Minhill Depot. Part of the workforce is now operating at Harrow. Harrow-based staff, who drive their vehicles to clean the streets, were given fuel cards to use. The cost of the fuel card is far more expensive than the fuel that was available in the tank, the underground tank at Mill Hill. Um, there is a small, small fuel tank from Mill Hill sitting in Harrow waiting to be connected. <laughs> there is also an ad blue tank which was left in Milford Depot and therefore not over at Harrow waiting to be connected. And members are saying, well how much money are we paying extra for fuel? Why is the fuel tank not connected at Harrow? Who's going to pay for the ad blue replacement tank to be set up in Harrow? In the new Oakley Depot, I'll tell you just a little story about a goods lift. The problem is, whilst it's called a goods lift, it isn't. It's a disabled lift. <coughs> a new lift is going to have to be installed. That's because the storeroom is above uh, the, the one in the area that needs to go up there. <laughs> Who is paying for this cost, certain workers? I could go on. I have very little more time. I now want members of the committee to stop for a minute and reflect on the increasing number of housing developments. According to the council's own website, there are, and I quote, seven major schemes already underway in the borough to deliver 27,000 new homes in the next 10 to 15 years. Population of Melbourne Mulberry is just over 27,000 people. They don't understand with that sort of amount of people that are going to generate rubbish and they're the only ones who will clear it up. One thing, we are cutting their jobs and the people who can do that. Finally, I want to share with you that I've been meeting with street team workers one day a week for the past 18 months. And I'd like the committee to know this. They are a workforce that you should be proud of. I know that I am. And there has been a great deal of change amongst the senior management team over the past two years. There was the threat of privatisation and, and this is a big one for them, the inexplicable decision to operate services out of Arrow Depot and the ongoing, <coughs> ongoing complexity and what they believe a waste of resources that brings. Yet they, the frontline workers, continue to turn out of work when most of us are asleep in our beds in order to keep our very clean. I'm here because I know it's a long shot. I know it's a long shot and I'm here this evening to ask the committee to do something you've never done before, and that was to listen to Barney at Unison uh, and reconsider the, the, the proposed cuts. That's time now. Is that right? You've still got time there. Just perfect. Then. That's all there. Thank you. Those, those, those people are quite proud of 
the areas that they work. It seems incredible to me that at a time where there are elections in less than eight months' time, that such a high-profile service that will become immediately apparent to your residents if this proposal doesn't work, and you know about the, uh, the developments in the housing house, that's why the workforce of the and don't understand it. There's only so much they can do. It's only going to get bigger. People want to live in Barnet. They generate waste. They generate litter. Any further questions? Just one, but uh, if, if you don't know me, the officer may. If you're looking at the regeneration estates, the building work, do we know how many more miles of streets there are? In other words, the proportion, you know, the percent, what is the actual cut okay, the workers with the growing number of streets? I don't know if anyone's worked that out. But we, it's true to say, there'd be less people cleaning more streets. <coughs>
to invest some staff to increase the sales that we have, then he will use these posts to fund them from the income that he'll get in the future, or she will get in the future. The same is true of the service support staff as some of the administration to deal with the stuff that's coming in, so that's going to be um, temporary, so it will be fixed her contract. However, our business grows and grows and grows, and it might be accountable for more, more staff in those areas. Thank you. Can I clarify something? Your appendix B of the report, which is in page 25 and 26 of our papers, both of the tables have postcode deletion and as their title. Is this an error? Is the second one supposed to be postcode deletion? Yes. Okay. Then there is, there is something that slightly puzzles me. In the postcode deletion, there are about 40 of them, of which 12 are vacant. And if I understand the post for creation, there are roughly 33 posts to be created. So, if you if you only if you only deleted the posts that are currently vacant, you'd actually you'd actually be cutting more posts than the number that is now to be um, saved by the restructure. So I'm not quite understanding where the savings come. Some of the uh, post for creation are it's, um, some of them are those ones which are unfunded, but if we had sales we should be good to create on the top. So I think six of the posts within it are unfunded, but we should be into the future for uh, expansion of business. Six of the of the posts to be created are unfunded. Yes, so they would be where we would expand up to have additional business when needed.